Let's take a look at how we use the uh, pattern analyzer. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to pattern our gun on a target. We need to use a square target anywhere from uh, 30 to 34 up to 60 inches depending upon the distance and the choke that we're going to use. Uh, we want it to be fairly stiff. You can put paper over plywood. You can use the uh, white insulating foam and put that over over plywood or stiff cardboard. And we don't want to mark on it, but we can take and uh, we can use a uh, uh, little uh, post-it or a sticky uh, shooting dot and put in the center. Uh, after we do that, we're going to make sure that we record our, sh our shell data. Some of this is critical to the program and some isn't. Uh, we definitely need to know the shot, the weight, the choke, and the velocity uh, in order to properly analyze the uh, pattern. After you uh, fire on the pattern, you're going to remove the sticky dot or sticky uh, post-it and you're going to take a high quality picture of it going just past the edges. After we take that picture, we are going to uh, crop the exact uh, target out and we're going to save it as a JPEG or a BMP at 900 by 900. So uh, let's go out and let's uh, do a test fire on a target and we'll bring it back in and work on it. Okay, we're using a 16 gauge with an improved modified choke. Uh, Number four shot, one and an eighth ounce, shooting at a 48 inch target at 30 yards. We're going to want to remove the dot or whatever we stuck in the center to aim at. And we're going to want to take a high quality picture, making sure we get just past the edges of the target. After we've fired on our test target, we're going to want to bring the picture in and crop the actual target. If you don't have a utility to do that, you can get to one on the main page, open page of the uh, pattern analyzer. We're going to navigate to our target. Then we're going to take and drag cursor across and get as much of the target in as we can depending upon how exactly level it is we'll determine how much we get after we get that we're going to go and we're going to copy that then we're going to go back to edit and we're going to crop the selection so now we have just the target. Next we're going to go to image and we're going to resize the target. Uh, we want to make it 900 by 900 and because it may be a little bit off if the aspect is turned on turn off the preserve aspect so that we can make it exactly 900 by 900. And now that we're done with that we're simply going to um, save this so that we can work with it. Best format to save it in is going to be JPEG. So after we've done that, we're ready to continue on. Once we get to the setup page, we're going to enter the data on the shell and the target. Uh, we use the 16 gauge with number 4 shot, 1 and an eighth ounce load. The choke was improved modified, the velocity was 1200 feet per second. No buffer. We used a Liant blue dot, 34 grains. Primer was a Chedite 209. Uh, the wad was a Ballistic Products SD16. 
the items which are really critical when evaluating the the pattern is the shot size, the weight, the velocity, the choke, if there's a buffer or not, and the wad. The wad makes a big difference. Uh, it can uh, change the uh, the speed by up to 200 uh, frame, uh, feet per second and can greatly change how a pattern performs. When we get to the target, we have 48 inch target 30 yards away. We're going to adjust for the drop and this is very important because when you shoot uh, in this case we dropped almost two inches well if we're going to evaluate the pattern we need to look at at the shot pattern by itself and not worry about how much it dropped uh, so if we take the the center and we draw our circle and, and draw all, all of our quadrant lines it's not going to be where the true center of the pattern is so by adjusting for the drop we're going to bring the pattern up so that we're actually looking at the center of the pattern in relationship to the barrel not in relationship to how far it's dropped we can also choose to um, look for the densest area in our pattern between two and six square inch area we'll go ahead and pick a four inch Lastly, if you happen to be working with a factory shell uh, or you're reloading uh, some that uh, like double lots, uh, they tend to, to rate them by the uh, number of pellets, not the weight. If that's the case, you can select the proper shot and then come down and, and select how many pellets are in your load and it will give you the weight for you. Lastly, we're going to select the pattern that we just finished cropping and resizing and getting ready. And then we're ready to go to our main page. On our main page, we've got our target that we shot at. You'll notice the target's raised up approximately 1.7 inches, taking away our drop moving our center from down here up to where it should be for the evaluation purpose. We have again our uh, shell data, target data in case we need to make any corrections. On the right side we have an evaluation grid that we're going to essentially transfer our, our uh, pattern onto. We're going to measure each individual pellet hole as it's added. On the left lower section we have the expectations based off of the, uh, the choke, the velocity, uh, the number of pellets. Uh, it gives what we should have. For example, uh, at this range we should have 138 pellets within 30 inches. Uh, 14 outside 30. Uh, ideal situation there would be essentially 38 in each quadrant uh, and uh, each subquadrant uh, how many pellets. Uh, the percent overall inside 91, uh, 30 inches would be 91 percent. This is what would be perfectly ideal. Now, when we run the scan, we can run it one of two different ways. Uh, the auto scan will sit here and it will scan this pattern and it will determine holes and, and transfer the data for you. It's a long process. Uh, to do this pattern, we would select an area approximately that size and we'd be looking at about four hours plus to scan that area. If it's uh, a tight pattern and you don't want to take the time to go through it, uh, you can start it and just leave it and let it run overnight or whatever you select. Just keep in mind, 
once you start it you don't want to open up any other program and overlay this this area or it'll mess up the reading of the uh, individual pixels you can however turn off your monitor without any problems you can also choose whether you want to scan the entire target or if you want to uh, select uh, an area range to be within and when you uh, during the setup process you're going to set up the size of the hole uh, you can actually let it calculate it or you, you can manually set up the size Now, whenever you're working on this you'll be able to tell uh, the holes versus the background by looking at this area here this color area when we're over the target on this case we're going to be light gray uh, when we're over a hole we're going to be a darker color it gives you the color and the color number so uh, if you do the automatic when you're going to set up a hole uh, uh, when you want to find the left of it you can go center of it and then go to the colors change dark same thing with going to the right and up and down it's also a, uh, a good means of making sure that you are on a hole uh, when you select one you can also choose the manual method where you're going to just individually click on each hole In most cases this will be the the easiest and most definitely the fastest way if you're working with something like a double lot uh, buckshot load uh, with 12 pellets you can obviously can just look at uh, this area and do it quite easily uh, when you start to get more pellets uh, in the air the, the size is smaller you can choose to work on one quadrant at a time when you select that you need to to work on quadrant one until it's done because if you go to one quadrant and come back you won't know what holes are added you also can choose based off the background color uh, whether to use the default which is a uh, a brightish orange or you can use a uh, bright green cursor and cover we'll go ahead and stay with the uh, default color so we'll select that we're going to manually do it and start it's going to remind you complete each quadrant before moving to the next we're simply going to go over and if you notice you can see the colors change and select left clicking on each one as we add it here it'll be added here when it's added uh, the distances will all be measured and it will automatically select the greatest distance between any of the pellets right now we've added two pellets and the distance between them is 5.73 inches based off of that our calculated choke would be super full or much better just for an idea you can see at 30 yards what each choke will do an improved modified uh, would be about a 42 inch pat pattern a full 34 extra full and super full the other thing to note when you start adding these is when you get to the sides in the bottom when there's one that's really close like you can see right here there's a pellet mark if we add it now we we'll need to make sure that when we get to quadrant four we don't add it again because it'll be visible but take note of any that are on the sides and bottom make sure you don't double add and then just add all of your pellets one quadrant at a time you'll see as we go that it's taken this four inch block and determined this is the densest area right now and this will continually update 
as more pellets are added. Once we're done with one quadrant and we're satisfied, we go to number two. Now once we've completed our pattern, we double check everything, uh, we can actually look at the uh, pattern we shot at itself to determine if an uh, item is really a hole. For example, this one was actually uh, a pellet hit and slid across the wood that it was on and ripped it. Uh, this is not a hole in itself. Uh, but we get everything ready. We've got every everything added to our uh, pattern for analysis, and we click done. At this point, uh, we're going to get a rating based off of a few items. First, how well did the choke perform? Uh, this was an improved modified, uh, yet we had some. Uh, pellets just out of range. Uh, this should have been uh, under 42 inches and it was slightly over 42. So it's a modified but technically it would still be an improved modified because uh, 0.15 inches is not that much over. But we went ahead and give our choke a 100% rating because of that. Density is going to look at uh, within two inches, within four, within six, and evaluate how well our density is. Uh, do we have a denser area in the middle and moving outwards? Does it move? Does it move out progressively, or is our outer areas more dense? Uh, we're going to look at uh, each uh, quarter section. How well did that fall based on ex expectations? Here we had 28, 34, 40, and 49. Uh, this is what it should have been. Wasn't that far off, so we got a 90% on that. And then we're going to look at our subquadrant rate range and compare it to what an ideal would be. And this was pretty good overall, and it got 140%. So the shell performed about 95% of a perfect ideal shell, uh, which isn't too bad for this kind of a load. Now, after we've uh, added everything, when we select Done, it builds this. It gives us the option to print. When we print, we can print uh, the two-page summary, which is essentially this data uh, plus more detailed information on groupings. We can choose to include the uh, individual pellet data, what each pellet did individually, and we can also choose to print the picture of our pattern that we shot at so that we can keep all of this for through our records when we go to modify our loads and compare them to what they did before. So I hope this helps you improve your shotgun pattern